Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to create a Father's Day card using Brusho. So this is a DIY tutorial this week and what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. So I'm gonna walk you through my process for using Brusho, which is essentially powdered concentrated watercolor. It's super fun to use, but it can be a little difficult if you're just getting started with it, understanding how to use it and what process is best so you can be the least wasteful as possible with your supplies. So all the supplies that are being used in this video can be found in the video description. Just click on that link and you'll have access to everything mentioned and used in this video. So I've already done a little bit of prep work for this card. So you can see I've got my watercolor paper. I've already templated out my card. So it's going to be seven inches wide by five inches tall. So when it's folded, it'll fit in any A7 sized envelope. So I've got all my marks right here. I'm gonna cut it down afterwards. And that's really important because I wanna be able to tape the edges. So when I trim it down, my color goes straight to the edge. Once I peel the tape off, I don't want any weird lines on my actual card. So having the paper larger than what you need to begin with is really important so you can tape those edges. I also have some tape right in the center. That's where I'm going to put my lettering for our Happy Father's Day. But if you'd like to use masking fluid instead, if you check out my Mother's Day card tutorial, I share my trick for using masking fluid without damaging your paintbrushes. So check that out if you'd prefer to use masking fluid instead for your lettering. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, this is taped down with artist tape, not masking tape. And artist tape is really great because when you have special paper like watercolor paper, it's less likely to tear or rip the top layer of your paper when you go to peel your tape off. So that's what I would recommend instead of masking tape. And it's important that you tape it down because once we add water to this watercolor paper, it has a tendency to bow or curl. And if it does that, then all of your water will start to drip to the edges and you'll lose those really Really beautiful textures. So we're just going to jump in and get started. I'm using an old paintbrush for this. It's got frayed bristles and that's really important with brusho, um, the process that I use anyway for applying brusho onto the watercolor paper. I have a spray bottle with just water inside of it. That's what we're going to use to get a really cool effect. And this is the set that I have of brusho right here. It's just a standard 12 pack. And that's really it. If you'd like to grab a heat tool, I like using a heat tool just to speed up the drying process. The drying process for this can be a little lengthy. So if you're impatient like me, then the heat tool is really handy for speeding everything along. All right, so we're just gonna start with applying our brusho. So my dad's favorite color is blue. So I chose a few colors ahead of time that I want to use for this and it's really important to choose colors that if they touch each other when they blend it's going to look really beautiful instead of muddy up the colors so I'm going to be using a light green all the way to a very dark blue so I have the colors that I'm going to be using right here I've got ultramarine which is my darkest blue that I'll be using I've got emerald green which is a dark green I've got leaf green which is a light green cobalt blue and turquoise right here so turquoise is my light blue cobalt's my middle and ultramarine is my dark so I'm gonna start with my light and then I'm gonna build up to my darkest just so I can get a nice foundation and add just a little extra color variety in contrast to my design Okay, so I've got my leaf green and when you open this up, you can see that it's just powder in here. And a lot of people like using brusho by poking a hole in the top of the cap right here with a thumbtack. And then what they do is just shake it on top of their watercolor paper. I like using a paintbrush instead because I feel like I have more control over how much comes out at a time and how much it kind of spatters as I put it down. So what I do is I just grab my paintbrush, I grab a little bit on the tip of my brush and then I just find the area that I'd like and I just tap it. So I have a little bit more control over where it goes and how much goes on at a time rather than just shaking and it kind of just spills wherever it goes. So I'm just going to add a little bit of variety by keeping my light green kind of contained to this area. And I'll add my darker blue over here just to add some extra variety. Okay, and then you can just close that up. I'm gonna grab my medium green, this emerald green, and you can see that the powder's already getting a little darker as I go. Okay, onto my blues now. I've got my turquoise right here. Move on to my cobalt blue, and a little bit goes a really long way, as you'll see once we apply the water, how vibrant and concentrated this powder really is. It's pretty surprising. Okay, last one. So this is my super dark blue, so I don't want to go too heavy handed here. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit up in this corner. Okay, so now we're ready to apply our water. And this part is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing because you don't want to oversaturate your paper. You don't want to spray too much because then all the colors start bleeding together when it gets too wet. And then you just don't get those really nice textures. So what you do is you grab your spray bottle, you hold it about six to eight inches above your paper, and then you're just going to spray it a few times until all of your powder is wet. You want to make sure you stop yourself before you go too far. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, that's far enough. So you can see that the powder has gotten wet enough, but it's not starting to bleed into all the different colors so everything gets muddy or you lose those textures. So if you see any areas that maybe could use an extra spray, you could do that or you can kind of wait it out and see how everything starts to dry. Another option you have if you like how things are looking but maybe you want a little extra color around your edges or where I've got my tape right here, you can use a paintbrush and go in and kind of dab the colors together to blend them. So you can do this. You just wanna make sure that you have a paper towel handy because these colors are concentrated and really rich. So it's really easy. Like if I start using green right here and then I go to my yellow, I'm definitely gonna mess up my yellow because the green is so dark. Just by grabbing just a little bit on your paintbrush, it gets really dark. Now is also a good time to just clean up your cutting mat because some of the powder might've gotten on your cutting mat or your surface right here while you spray. Okay, so I'm gonna speed up this drying process by using my heat tool and then I'll be right back. Okay, my card is all dry now. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of powder left over on top of it that you can just kind of flick off into a trash can. But we are all set right here. So now you can start taking off your tape. So with the artist tape or any tape really, you wanna grab a corner and then kind of go at an angle like this. Okay, and now you can just trim the rest of your card down to size and then we'll add in our lettering. Okay, and now I'm just going to add my lettering using a Tombow Fudenosuke twin tip. And I've got the black part right here, so I'm just going to add in that lettering. All right, and you're all set. That is how to create a Father's Day card using Brush Show. So now you can just place it in any A7 sized envelope and it's ready to go. And once again, all the supplies to what we used for this video are right in the video description. So just click there and you'll have access to everything. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my blog, every hyphen Tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.